All right, so welcome back. You ever watch one of those videos? Detailers or whatever you call them that do car detailing or found this air yoke in a barn and after the first wash in decades. Well, we're going to do something similar to that. We're going to move a lot of old algae and everything that's baked onto this yoke. She is rotten. And um, there's more grease on that engine than there probably is in the joints themselves. So we're just going to give this one hell of a good clean. It'll definitely make it much easier to work on because you'll be able to see where all the leaks are. Although we don't really want to see very many more. There's enough of them as it is. So we're using a degreaser here. Um, it's just basically a lorry degreaser and film, road film remover, if that's what you want to call it. So spray this stuff on. It says to leave it for about five, 10 minutes. Definitely clean it. That looks so much better already. But at least we can now see the pipes and things, not just this big smear of grease. spot and I don't want to sit in this seat in case I get tetanus and it's absolutely brutal so it's on the steering wheel it's not comfortable but it's better than that seat and it's full of old crap and moss and effort that comes with these old diggers so the first thing I want to do is open this no actually I don't want to open the back window you've never seen the back window closed by the way there it is it's just filthy so I'm going to go in here and pull all this old crap that's laying in here. Wetsuits and rubbers and stuff. And even a tube of a tyre, I think, by looking at it from here. Yep. No, no. Right. Oh, yeah. Look. Right, I'm out of that pretty spot. Uh, I'd say the rest of it. Although it would have been great if the digger had been facing the other way now, in fairness. And uh, most of the door would have run out of the hole instead of away from it but we'll get there we'll turn it around now i know a lot of these are going to say edge and you're going to have to hoover that out and whatever you do don't put the power washer in there not you enough I can see the hydraulic filter and I can see all the grease and grime that's down there. Look, it's absolutely plastic. So I'm going to spray some degreaser down there and hit it from this side. Take that battery out. 
clean the housing under that, pressure wash it all down, take a bit of time out of here, and this will make a big difference. Anyway, she looks a lot better now. Unbelievable amount of grease we took of this. The amount of stuff that we took off the cement down there after we were finished was high amountable. I'd say it lost a sight of weight. It's like moving from the basic room to the honeymoon suite in a one-star hotel. Still have a board's nest they have to remove, and it's not nesting season anymore, so I can remove it. You can see out the windows now, and that was a hell of improvement, the back window. But all the handles is good. All the mechanisms is, is fairly tight for its age. Toolbox. Toolbox is still a bit, yeah, but it's clean. And that means it's now finally time to start into the proper work and getting this thing into some sort of shape. So I was kind of wondering where would I start? There's so much to do. So I think the first thing which I'm mad to get at is the very thing that I'm sitting on, which if I sit any longer, I get piles from. And that would be this thing here, which is a horrendous state. So that needs to come out. I have a new seat for it. So hopefully it'll not fight us too much and we'll get that off and get the new one on fairly easily. So I'd like to say one other thing first before we do start into that. The hand throttle, do you remember I mentioned that in the last video? Well, a lot of people told me what the hand throttle was. And there it is. It looks quite simple now when you see it. I thought that was from adjusting the chair. It was completely sea solid. It wouldn't move no matter what you've done. But that's what I thought it was because of its positioning. But that is the throttle and I have it freed up now and it works great. It does actually make sense now. When you turn around, you have the throttle there, you can walk on both sides. So yeah, it is a good enough spot. I wouldn't have known that. And a lot of people did mention me. So thanks for that. That was a great relief because I run straight up after that video went out and I tried it. I had to just try to make sure that it was right. And that was great. Getting it freed up, getting it working. Brilliant stuff. Another thing I got fixed, which was even better again. I mentioned the steering in the last video. I thought the steering was very light. She just wanted to go straight ahead the whole time. No matter what I'd done, even getting the bucket in nice and tight behind, she still wanted to just go straight ahead. By the way, the steering's perfect on this, and it's rare enough for the steering to be good. I'd say there must have been work done on it recently, but there's no air locking or no stiffness or nothing. It turns perfectly as it should. But a lady called Rona, hope I pronounced your name right, she told me they have one of these, and she said this stick here is for your diff, and be careful that that's not in the wrong place, because if it's forward, that means the diff's on. And if it's back, it means it diff's off. I didn't even know what that lever was for because there's nothing written on it. So she told me to check it and I went up and I did check it straight away. And steering is perfect. It was completely seized as well. I freed it out by lifting that lid there. The mechanism's just down there. We sprayed a bit of WD-40 in it. And away it went. So thanks very much for that. You know who you are. I do appreciate that because that little bit of help you give me. I hope I pronounced your name right. I'm brutal with names. Thank you for that. That was great help. Brilliant help and again, another thing I don't have to fix. The new seat's beside it, and Hudson lay on the other side, but there's the new seat. It looks a bit different, definitely does. Mm, different colour. This is the bio that turns it around. Uh, not great. It shouldn't be grinding like that. So there's ball bearings here. This one was out. It sits in there. But it rolls on these, they're very stiff. They're not worn, they're just very stiff. It actually rolls on that. So I'd say it just needs a good cleaning. A bit of grease on these. Yeah, they don't look to be damaged or anything. And they're all there. Right, so here is our base. I have it all degreased. But there's the kind of stuff that I took out of it. It's nearly like maul or putty. It acts like a glue more than anything. So it was stopping these from turning. I will need to clean these, each and every one of these. Put a shine back on them and put new grease, bearing grease is what I'll use instead, and pop them back into place. And that should free them up an awful lot. Right, now I can see we have a problem. It's sitting too far this way, that. 
actual mechanism is causing an issue and you take that bracket off. Right, so that's them all in and all greased up. The trick is now to put this back on without the balls falling out. And the grease will hold them. Yeah. They're in out. See that movement? That needs some sort of a sleeve there to stop that from happening or bushing because that itself is causing it not to rotate properly. We're thinking about just welding a washer here on the inside. This washer is exactly the size of the threaded bolt that comes up through. Weld it on that side and weld it on this side as well. So two washers and that should be fine. So much better. Okay. It sits a bit higher than the last one. Well, I definitely have to put it back a bit. This does remind me when my wife is in my Jeep and she puts the seat forward, and then when you get into it, you probably have to get used to it. But remember, I said when I first bought this digger. Um, that it could do up in a wee bit higher the seat. That is perfect. And I can lean it forward, put a bit of grease on that seat now and pull it forward, I'm working. I'm fit to see out right. Oh yeah, that's more like it. I'm happy enough with that. Oh, if it can get turned around. A couple of days later, seat is now in. Happy with that. But the next thing I want to tackle is kind of start at the front here and move away back. And that would be this front grille. Lots of loose wires hanging, tangled around everything. Block connectors. So we have the grill sitting over there. I have to do a couple of little bit of repairs on it before it goes back on. But I want to actually have a look at these lights here. They seem in good condition from here. But I still want to take them off now before I touch the grill and kind of sort some of this wiring out here. At least tidy this section up because I do want to get all the lights working on this. We might as well start with here before we put on this grill now that we have good access to it. So let's see what we can do. This guy here to catch some of these bolts. Nothing is going to be easy to take apart here. All right, well that came out. That one didn't. All right, so, so far so good. It's amazing what a wee bit of penetration fluid can do. Spray it on, let it sit for a while. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, that's that off. All right, so here's our wee lights. Now, what way are they screwed in? And as you can see, there's not much chance of that working, unless they're wireless. That block connector lapped around these pipes, which wouldn't help it, obviously needs to go to this one. And this one here then, I've been thinking, should be connected to that one. But as you can see, if you're ever wiring in any kind of a vehicle, don't use block connectors. They'll not last. They'll let you down and you'll always get shorts with them. So use a uh, solder. You just cannot beat solder or some sort of connection, but not block connectors. I'm trying to keep these wires because they are color coded to match what's already on the other one. So they are the original wires. So I want to keep those. You can use these connections. People love them. They are good. They're just solid connections. So basically what you have is you have a few different sizes in this one, but you have shrink wrap with a ring of solder down the middle. And when you heat that ring of solder, um, it'll melt into the wire and the shrink wrap will seal. It's just an all-in-one connection, fairly decent. But today I'm just going for the good old solder, which I think is still the best bite. So I'm gonna run some shrink wrap now 
over these joints heat that on and that'll be a good connection made it's very dark in here sorry but there's a red wire there heavy duty wire so i presume it's carrying power i'll have to check and see where it's coming from but that was rubbing again the power steering um ram here and that's completely bare and rubbing again bare metal so yeah that's a that's a great thing this wire is coming around here and coming out here and down i'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be there but i'm just going to pull it back and have a wee look at it before we do any more so this is this wire that i was telling you about look completely bare now that is not joined to anything at the moment but me thinking if i'm right that that wire should be connected to this glow plug because it is a heavy duty wire and normally a heavy wire like that would be exactly what you would find going to a glow plug and it has nothing on it at the moment so now the diesel pipe isn't connected to the glow plug so i'm gonna have to find where the diesel pipe is where it's supposed to be coming from and why it has been disconnected but for now let's just make this thing safe cover all this wire up again and check to make sure there's no other shorts the whole way along it put it in the right place here that it's not rubbing again any steel and make it much better than that there brake cleaner on this wire is covered in grease so we're going to recover this wire i'm going to just put this here across it i don't use insulating tape I'm not a big fan of it unless it's inside but if it's outside or can get exposed by the sun, I use this other tape here. It's kind of a fabric tape. If you go into any auto store and ask for it, it's pliable and it doesn't deteriorate with the sun. Now the wire comes up along here now, so it doesn't rub again anything. It goes up the top and in behind and nothing can rub again that wire. These are the two wires for the horn. And I think I might have a horn unit sitting in there in the shed. If I have, I'll stick it on it now and be done with it. Just before I mount this horn, you can see here, this air cleaning box isn't bolted down. And the holes in all are there, it's just no bolts on it. So I can use that to my advantage. I can put two new bolts into this and use this new unit that I have here and just hang that somewhere across like that and that'll be a horn and all done and these bolted all in one go. There we go. The connections the way they're all bent so that's not going to work they're not even touching so we're going to have to solve that there it is now it's off all about the bulb isn't blown a bit dirty but it's not blown part of the problem was that the wire has been pulled and that's what bent these terminals in the first place now I have them straightened. I took the light down, the last down, it's in brilliant condition. The reflector as well, again, look, perfect. A wee bit of corrosion there, but otherwise, very good. Um, the bulb that sits into this, I haven't got one of these bulbs, but that one um, is damaged as well. So you can see here the terminal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a wee bit of solder back on that there. So we have a little bit of contact between the two. I'll probably go off and get two new bulbs for it. But today is Sunday, there's nowhere opened, and maybe this will do for a while. So there it is. I'll just use a bit of solder, build up a new pint. Once you have the wire coming up um, from the bulb itself, and you can still see the wire on the pint, then a wee bit of solder like that there, just blistered on top of it. We'll get you out of a hole if you're ever stuck, and that there can last a long time. Right, so it's the following day, and we're back at it. And I had to leave it yesterday, because the little bulb repair that I'd done, although it would have worked, I let it fall on my hand and of course when I hit the ground it uh, was considerably shorter when I picked it up and no amount of solder would fix that so yeah I had a bit of a word with myself. We're back at the day anyway and we have a couple of bulbs. Another little problem that I had yesterday was this little key. Funny kind of thing that holds these together but there's a wee key. This lad here isn't the other one. It slips in and when I took it apart it fell out. 
Well, I looked and I looked and I looked for that thing. Even after milking yesterday, even I sent the girls up at the brush just to sweep around underneath the digger. I moved the digger. I looked for a good hour for it. Couldn't find it anywhere. This morning, I was bringing out my tools, putting them on the bench here ready to work. Picked up my impact and it's got a lovely little magnet on the side of it. And guess what's stuck to the magnet? So the thing that's bending these is this wire here. It's for it to go up and down as it pleases. So if the wire ever gets pulled down below, it's going to bend these brass terminals. So to fix that, just get a cable tie. Might seem simple, but it is the way to fix it. And pull the wire up as best you can. Get the cable tie in, down as far as you can, and pull it on the wire. Good and tight. German style. And that there will stop that from happening. And hopefully keep these in better nick for longer. Another thing I really don't like is these guys here, these scotch clips. They're the worst thing you could nearly use. So I'm going to take them off, I'm going to solder this. We've got more work to be done, but it's worth taking the time to do it because you never have to visit this again. Now before I put it back together again, there is a bolt that holds on this whole panel here. And it's rung on that and it's rung a long time by the looks of it. But I'm going to put a wee bit of heat on to see can I get it out. If we can, that means we can get a new bolt into it and hold it. And just leave the thing looking a lot better. And, solid or as well oh now can be that easy So let's try to put this grill on. It's never been on since I bought it. There we go. That's back to front, is it? Yep. Yeah. Right this way. Are we any closer? I think we are. So there you have it. I know it's a bit dark here because the sun is kind of straight in my eyes and it's, it's that winter kind of sun now so it's hard to block it out but we have a grill on and it does look a hell of a lot better it's an old machine it's going to require <laughs> everything to be took apart and sorted but look at it i'm going to just take my time and do a bit by bit but we're getting there new seats in it a bit of wiring on the front new grill and a mountain of grease removed from it it's a step in the right direction hope you enjoyed this video guys thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one It hasn't been changed in a long time. Oh dear. That's not good. And I'm after dumping the oil and the oil is jet black again. Might have to do it a third time. But you see all the sediment built up there? Rotten. That is rotten. 